Hello everyone, it's Isabella here and welcome back to the channel. So hi everyone, I'm wearing this really cute like cozy. It's literally fuzzy, like it's a fuzzy dress. So I'm comfy, I'm warm, it's November. We're gonna be talking about and reacting to a sales training by Jessie Lee. So I know that we actually talk about a lot of recruitment based trainings and I wanted to talk about a sales training instead. And so again, I think it's a great contrast and it's also a really good opportunity to talk about what some of these crazy professionals are talking about sales and everything thing which is a big problem. The reason also why I was really interested in talking about the sales training that somebody sent me is because um, Jessie Lee actually is apparently on her birthday launching a like training. I'm talking like an actual like course training thing where she has quote unquote her millionaire friends and everyone else invest a lot of money into her knowledge and I'm going to be very honest with you here. She is good at manipulation in my opinion, but I don't necessarily think that she is just a smart person business-wise. I, I don't. I think she's just getting advice from other people and then running with it. And because she has a, a name in this industry, she slaps it on and calls it a day. That's just my belief here. And again, I also am pulling that inference because like we have just seen a huge lack of logic and actual comprehension of real world stuff in many MLM based trainings. So you guys, I'm not even kidding. This literally just went up today. It's called hashtag boss league accelerator. Who's your coaching package below? So she's talked about she's going to be coaching people and how she's going to be changing the game. So this is so bad. Oh my God. Lastly, Accelerator. The group is for anyone and everyone who wants to learn how to grow their business from the ground up, included weekly accelerator calls with Jesse Lee via Zoom, access to the exclusive Bossly Accelerated community, weekly and monthly advancement tasks with the task list, resources and documents that have been proven to improve online business and weekly giveaways. You can spend 1,437 euro or 149 a month. Um, yeah, then platinum. This is fucking unreal. I dislike this woman so much. Bossly Platinum. This group is for those who are committed to scaling their business and what higher level topics and concepts, including everything included in Boss League Accelerated Plus, high-level topic by weekly Zoom calls on leadership, scaling, culture, wealth growing, high-level branding, high-level marketing, and more with Jessie Lee and her expert celebrity friends, including everything from crypto investing in real estate and more. Access to exclusive Boss League Accelerator, Platinum Company Group, hot seat trainings, pop-up training calls, massive giveaways, I think designer and technology, and cash for completing specific advancement tasks, and the option for one-on-one -on -one weekly Voxer access to Jessie Lee, and the option for a 20-minute one-on-one coaching call with Jesse Lee within your first 90 days and then Boss Lee Platinum Swag, which is almost $1,000 a month and almost 10K a year. So that's it. Also a yearly bonus of voice memo access to Jesse Lee during her one hour a week. Any all questions and one on one coaching call within the first 90 days of signing up. So this is another thing too is Boss Lee Mastery. So apparently she's having a master event early 2023 in Cabo, Mexico. Secure your ticket. So it's early 2023 in Cabo, Mexico. Jesse Lee and special guest plus celebrity. So this is another thing she talked about in another video that she made it was about how she has celebrity friends and she's bringing celebrities into this training stuff which is so like I'm so sorry but she is literally kissing her own ass so bad it is embarrassing only 40 tickets available members of the empire please attend Wednesday's training for information it's happening in like 60 days I'm pro honestly I'm probably gonna try and cover this as much as I can join me for the first ever two-day immersive event that I'm holding for six figure plus earners who want to learn the best way to scale to seven figures and beyond ah, it is fifteen thousand dollars to go with her on this Fifteen thousand dollars. Two day stay, food meals, activities, swag, entertainment, paying for her too, I'm sure. And then also you have it to where flights are not included. Flights are the responsibility of the attendant. I'm so tired of this woman. It is unfucking real to me. So this one thing I will say is um for this trip, active prove it promoters are prohibited from enrolling or purchasing these educational training programs. Members of the Empire, please attend Wednesday's training for information. Okay, so one thing I will say though. Was, again prove it promoter so this is excluding prove it promoters and people of the empire I wonder if that's like a legal reason why she's not doing that but again like I don't think this is excluding other people in other multi-level marketing industries as well all I'm saying is this woman in my opinion there is she has no room to be charging this much like she I'm sorry but this is not an intellectual being in my opinion especially when it's it's embarrassing when me, a 22 year old in the middle of fuck all can can call you out on your BS because you lack logic and critical thinking. The same woman who literally made a training talking about reaping what you sow in regard to multi-level marketing companies, but the analogy was debunked so easily it was actually embarrassing for her. Is she fucking for real? I wish I could be this delusional. Genuinely, I wish I, I'm, I'm kidding. No, actually I wouldn't because then I would probably be a horrible person. Um. Anyways, let's watch this training. 
Hello, hello, everybody. What's going on? It's Jesse Lee. You can call me Boss Lee or the People's Mentor. And if you are tuning in live, you can go and drop a one below. If you're catching a replay, you can drop I miss you below. I'm going to talk today about sales, 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 sales. So I just trained in Las Vegas this weekend and I got into some of my sales techniques, but I thought to myself, oh my gosh, if people... If people realized how good I was at sales, uh, I don't know. I've got a lot of things and sales is definitely one of them. And I thought, okay, well, if Furkan wants me to train sales and the whole world probably wants me to train sales. And so if that's true, you can comment a heart below and we're going to get started. So uh, I think you should listen to me when it comes to sales. I think you should sell, uh, share this video. I did sell personally over $400,000 last month. I tend to do that pretty frequently. Uh, and so I, I think I know what I'm talking about when it comes to question. And I have questions for people who are in Prove It and I need to look into this more. Um, does her personal sales also include people inside of her downline that's what I would like to know because personal sales and again she could have other external businesses and things as well that she has that could be performing in this way which if you have external businesses that's great good for you but again a lot of this started with multi-level marketing companies and expanded from that so if she is talking about the multi-level marketing world though and personal sales is she pulling personal sales in regard to prove it and does prove it count personal sales also with downline sales as well because i've seen mlms include downlines with personal sales so i'd love to know about that let me know to sales so with that said that's all the edification of myself i'm going to do and then we're just going to keep rocking and rolling and feel free to share this at any point in time if you get some value out of it okay so the first thing i will say if you want to sell more is you do need to know a lot about your product okay now if you're brand new i don't want you to overthink this because a lot of you will literally misunderstand what i'm saying and you're not going to get started in the sales process because you are not going to you're going to feel like you have to know everything. And I'm not telling you to know everything. I'm telling you to spend time at least a little bit every single day, every single day, uh, learning something about your product or your service or your business. Okay. This is really important because if you do that, you start to gain an edge on other people. So you don't need to know everything, but little tiny nuances, little tiny things that let you stand out above the crowd will make a really big difference in scaling your sales funnel. Okay. Little tiny stuff. So like, I don't know everything on planet earth around a product I sell, but I start to pay attention to little things that will close people faster. Like I, instead of saying, oh, it's just a protein shake. I might say something like, oh, it's a protein shake with extra amino acids, specifically leucine, which will help with uh, changing your uh, the way your muscles look. Like something like that, those little tiny, little tiny, little tiny factoids are going to make you have a leg up over the competition who may or may not be selling the same. Okay, so let's actually pause this here. So I like what she's talking about, about knowing products and knowing what you're selling, which is very important. But again, if you actually run your own legit business, I don't think you need to go out of your way to learn about it because like you literally are creating creating it or developing that stuff. Like I, you know what I mean? So hence again, additional perspectives of why I do not think being in an MLM is you actually owning your own business because you're waiting and depending on other people in production to launch a product so that way you can talk about it. You are not a part of that production or knowledge process. And so, okay, yeah, like I completely understand about learning products and learning about it. However, the biggest problem with this though, that we have seen many times with MLMs is misinformation. And again, this isn't exactly like always the promoter's fault. It's also the CEO or the creator's fault as well because what we come to notice and I'm going to be using Monet as an example is Monet has actually had a very huge problem to where at their conventions when they're product promoting and all this stuff a lot of the higher ups will promote their products in a very misleading way to the point of where they've had lawsuits over their misleading products and their misleading statements along with the fact that they've had letters from the STC about the misleading of the business as well so we have the CEOs and everything misleading about the products and so it's very difficult for people to have actual healthy knowledge about products and what we fall into is when we go into a category about something that can be involved with like health and wellness for example like improve it we, we start trekking into some really dangerous waters and very crazy claims we've had people talk about ridiculous claims in regard to the prove it products or anything of that matter we've had people in young living talk about how they have healed everyone from an essential oil we've talked about people making their babies and just things like it's very dangerous and i'm all about learning about products but it's hard to do that when literally the source of information is mainly misleading about the business along with products may or may not keep making noise during this training we're gonna hope she doesn't because there's a thunderstorm outside right now i can't really do much okay so you are the ambassador of your product and, and if you're not using it by the way maybe write that one down that's a little bonus tip if you're not utilizing your product or your service it's, you are going to have a really really difficult time scaling your sales another thing i would like to bring up which i'm really happy that she did she said specifically write this down that if you do not have your own product then how are you able to sell it well and 
scale and use the product as well, which yes, absolutely. That's a big reason additionally why I don't think you are a business owner because when you have to literally continuously purchase your products again, or maybe you aren't even using it as well, but you're talking about it, that is a problem. But a thing that a lot of people fall into is buying so much products from their MLMs. And we've seen so many MLMs that launch so many different damn products, it's ridiculous. And so every convention, there's usually a product launch. Every like event, there's something different, right? And so people purchase those products and that adds up a ton. And again, in order to really talk about it well and have a good knowledge about it, most of the time people have a pressure to purchase it so that we can physically post about it, talk about it, and show that they're using the product. And she's even vocalizing how significant this is as well. This is entirely different from actually being a business owner because most of the time you have inventory in stock already with you, so that is not very hard. Or you also are the ones that are developing and creating the products, therefore it is not that hard. Whereas if you're just joining into an MLM, you have to purchase all these products and do all these things as well. And it honestly turns into a loss essentially because you're buying the product on the chance of talking about it to an audience in hopes that it can sell. And you're already investing a lot of money in, but when the return rate for MLMs is so significantly low, you're gonna be in the hole by the hundreds, if not thousands, very quickly with that. Because you will not have the ability to answer basic questions. So write that down as well. If you're not using your product, if you're not using your service, if you're not actually actively building your business, if you're somebody who uses, um, who utilizes selling, uh, selling businesses and opportunities, you need to start doing that. Okay. If you don't use it, why would anybody buy it from you? Okay. Next thing that I want you guys to write down in your notes is know your prospects pain points. I have my notes over here. Know your prospects pain points. Okay. Listen, every single person that is a prospect of yours, which we'll get into prospecting in a minute here. And thank you for sharing. I appreciate you. You're intelligent. If you're sharing this to your sales teams, if you're not sharing this to your sales teams, I'm just going to assume you literally don't want to scale your business. So that's kind of a problem. Why would you say that? See, this is exactly why I say you should never trust somebody who is selling a $15,000 fucking event or course for that matter. Matter, because this goofy over here has a problem with degrading people just because. If you're not listening to me, then you don't want to actually scale your business. Why do you want someone to listen to you when you're immediately disrespectful to them? This is very childish behavior, and this is also really intimidating and pressuring on people. And again, friendly reminder, this is the same one who has literally sat leaders down and pressured them to do things because they need to be coachable to her. And if they essentially don't listen to what she wants you to do, then she says you are un uncoachable and you are a bad leader. She is a fucking horrible person, in my opinion. And again, like I'm literally, I will have all of them in the description below and popping up as I'm talking about it. I have literally crazy amounts of examples of how horrible this leader is. And so this is the shit that drives me crazy. The random jabs at people. I'm sorry, but if you're a good leader, you also want to sit here and have care and consideration and be kind when you're teaching people about information. And if you want people to be receptive about it, you also should be respectful to them. They're not going to be receptive if you're an asshole of yours, not mine. Uh, hopefully this has been shared to our team already multiple times. If you haven't already shared it to our team chats, please do so. Okay. So solve their products. You can talk about, if you will, like the magnificence of your service, the magnificence of your product, right? Uh, but really you can talk all day about the product, but I want you to think more like, how is this going to solve a problem that they have? Okay, so if you are in some kind of financial services, what is the problem somebody has? Well, I would say if you haven't noticed, most of the world is freaking broke. So they're probably looking for an opportunity to uh, make extra income. They're probably looking for an opportunity to learn how to trade. Maybe they're looking for an opportunity to understand crypto uh, currencies. Maybe they're looking for an opportunity to understand how to leverage time. Okay, maybe they're looking for uh, health and wellness things. Maybe they're looking for better skincare. Maybe they're looking for better makeup. Maybe they're looking for more confidence. What are the problems these people are having? If you're selling a business opportunity, a big problem is obviously especially if you're in a demographic where you're selling to uh, women who are of birthing age, these women really don't want to leave their homes. They want to stay home with their children. That is a pain point. That you See, again, this is a woman that is very self-aware of what she's doing. She's good at manipulating, but she's yet not a very bright human being, in my opinion, because she has horrible analogies and trainings, but yet she also was aware of her demographic and how to be manipulative, in my opinion. So she's literally talking about birthing age, moms that want to stay home. That is a target demographic that most MLMs will go after. Now, I will want to say also that what she's talking about with learning about pain points and understanding people and your target demographic, that is very true. You know, like you want to understand how to market our products. That's something I think about a lot too, when I want to have a business that I want to start someday in the future, we'll see it. But you know, I sit there and think, how can I help somebody out? How can I change the game in the market that I want to enter in? And that's very, very good to think about. With the MLM, it's manipulative. Uh, again, there's certain sales tactics that are very gross for any industry, okay? Let's get that out of the way. There's some that are completely gross in any industry that is not normal or appropriate. And then with this too, I think this is a gross sales tactic because we get into the world of the MLMs where the MLM claims that it can fix absolutely everything. And so you sit there 
there and act as if the product or the MLM can fix everything for you. And it is completely false advertising because she is talking about solving a problem. It's one thing if I, uh, I have a hairbrush, love this for me. It's one thing if I have a hairbrush and says this thing works really well, it can be proven that it works really well with testimonials and everything. Whereas with an MLM, there are literal physical proof studies and things that the FTC clearly states that shows that this is not going to be solving a problem for majority, if not almost all people. That is insane to me, but yet you want people to go on and claim that it can solve a problem for you. You can actually solve by selling your business. Does that make sense? So you can literally ask people, you know, Hey, what are your goals here? You can ask people the right questions. Like what is your budget? A lot of you are shopping with your wallets, write that down. You're, you're, write all this down. You're shopping with your wallets. You're not shopping with other people's wallets. If you start shopping with, 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 with thinking, Hey, you know what? I'm going to assume this prospect has Jesse Lee's budget. You might start upselling, cross-selling a lot more because you're not thinking, Oh my gosh, this person is broke. Find those pain points and then listen to what they're saying. People will literally tell you what they're looking for. I used this example on stage just the other day. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate you. Uh, I used this example on stage just the other day. I said, people will go to a car lot. Hi, Enrique. We'll go to a car lot and they'll say, I don't know what kind of business or what kind of car I'm looking for. Okay. And if you listen, they'll say things like, yeah, you know, I got five kids. Um, you know, all of them are in sports. My wife is super busy. I don't want anything that's super, super feminine looking. I don't like those, you know, minivans that look like really. She's talking about something so basic. It's called listening. <laughs> No shit. People are going to describe what they want because they're talking. It's called just specifically listen to them. And this isn't revolutionary. That's ridiculous. I want something a little sleeker. You know, I, I think I need a third row. They're literally going to tell you exactly what kind of vehicle they need without telling you exactly what kind of vehicle you need. You just won't hear it if you're not listening. Okay. So you need to start paying attention to exactly how whatever it is they're using is a direct, why did my webcam get blurry? Sorry. Um, how whatever it is for them is a, is directly going to solve their problem. They're going to tell you exactly what they need. You just need to stop for a minute and listen. Okay. Next, it's really easy if you know your customers. So like, there's a reason I spend so much time on live video. I can't, I can't explain how important live video is um, without just stopping for a second and saying, are you kidding me? Get on live video. Okay. So the reason I say that is because I am getting to know you every single time I go live. Oh, this is my first live training by you and you love it. I love that. Okay. So I start to notice your usernames. I'm not reading off of anything except for my notes that I took over here. So I'm literally looking at the screen. I'm starting to notice people like Mac or Thelma or Deb or Lynn or Kay. I see you all the time, Kay Clemmer. I just don't know what your name is on here because it's not your name. Okay. I'm looking over here on Joanna. I'm looking over here on Chris. I'm looking over here on Ray or Jeffrey or, or Christy. Okay. I'm starting to get to know you and I'll start to ask questions. If you start to do any of the get readies with me or anything like that, I come on and I actually ask you questions. I'll say, Hey, tell me a fun fact about you. Do any of you have pit bulls, by the way, that just want to talk to you the entire time that you're doing a live video? Because this is like a new thing that she does and it's driving me crazy. Okay. I'm going to give her a treat actually. Okay. But you start to get to know people. When you get to know people, it's a lot easier to close people. All right. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Well, he needs a... Uh... I don't know. What does she need? She needs a, a freaking pig ear or something. All right, here. We're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna make Wookie quiet with a pig ear. There we go. Okay. And he does. We got dog moms on here. I love that. So I start to get to know you guys, right? I start to understand who you are. I start to understand. Hey, you like this? He likes that. She's from here. He's from there. You start to learn people. When you start to learn different things about people, it's much easier to close them. Much easier to close them. Not to say I'm on here trying to close every single one of you. I'm just saying if you would know your prospects, you would know your customers in advance. You could close them a lot quicker. It also helps if you're a president. President. <laughs> if you're present, it will make you more confident as well in those relationships. Okay. So start to get to know that. <clears throat> It'll help you. Next tip. Follow up. I just left an investment meeting where I was talking to somebody. I'm considering investing in some luxury townhomes here in Frisco, Texas, turning them into Airbnbs. Just met with these guys over here. Just had a meeting at six o'clock. Really great conversation. It was a lot of fun. Okay. And as soon as I left there, I sent him a text message and I just said, it was a pleasure chatting with you. Okay. Now, what do you think that that has done in this relationship? Nothing's closed. He's actually the one who probably should be closing me. He didn't send a message to me yet. I sent a message to him. Hey, it was a pleasure chatting with you. <clears throat> and I used his name. Okay. That is a form of follow-up. When was the last time you had a conversation with somebody, whether it was in text message, whether it was on a, on a DM over here on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or whatever, when was the last time you had a conversation like that? And you slowed down for a second, just to say, Hey, thanks for uh, following or thanks for the time together. It was a pleasure chatting with you. Hey, I, I really enjoyed that conversation. Looking, looking forward to, to more. 
Okay. Like all of that little follow-ups like that. I think sometimes we overthink fortune being in the follow-up and we go on and on and on and on, and on thinking it's some kind of script you need. You don't. Okay. So I get what she's talking about with following up with people, but here's my problem with this too. Is like, think about a lot of big businesses. They don't follow up with you with this or they're not trying to actively hunt you down. You know what I mean? Like they're just good at marketing because that is literally why marketing is so significant. You want people to look at what you have or look at your product and sit there and be like, oh fuck, I really want that. And you go and you just buy it. I don't ever have a moment really where I sit there and have a conversation with someone in order to buy the product. That's kind of an unrealistic thing. So talking about like closing with someone, that's for very rare instances. If anything, again, you need to be focusing on proper marketing. I just don't know why we're having a conversation about this unless we're referring to the idea of building relationships, which is something that is a problem in MLMs, is they claim to build relationships, but the conversations are meant to get you into the MLM. So I'm sorry, but in the real world, this like, no random business owner is going to be sitting there so hardcore trying to have a conversation with you just to sell a product because clearly then that product is not that enticing at all or not that very straightforward. And if you need to have a conversation like this, it looks like your goal is to recruit them and not to really sell a product, but you need them to buy the product to get them interested in it in the first place. Is script. I think more people need to be more human. If you would be more human, you would sell more. Say that again. You would sell more. If Sorry. Also, yes, this is connected to recruitment because she talked about selling her business at the beginning. So yes, technically you're selling a business or a concept, but I think this is a sugar cutting way of recruiting someone. Like just say recruiting someone, babe. You would be more human. Okay. And I think all salespeople, all salespeople agree the fortune is in the follow-up, right? So follow up immediately. It will change everything for you. All right. It doesn't matter if you're the best product. doesn't matter if you're the best service. doesn't matter if your meeting goes flawlessly doesn't matter if your opportunity event is incredible if you don't reconnect with your prospects afterward the other uh, the opportunity to close that sale slips right through your fingers okay slips right through your fingers i had a conversation just today i said a lot of you okay do you guys want to know a little thing about nashville i got an in, I, an insight to some of some of our leaders in nashville <laughs> if you text me and i'm in the middle of a conversation <clears throat> i don't stop the conversation like, I don't understand people who will send like a text message and then like you send a text message and then they send a text message and then like they go away. If that drives you crazy, will you say yes below? Like, what did you just do? Did you, did you throw your phone on a couch? Like literally what happened? I don't know where you went. I don't understand that. So this is a true story. Okay. So we're in Nashville. We're in a bar. We're a little, uh, they're a little lost. I'm not lost. They're a little lost. We're in this bar. And I'm like trying to, everyone knows we're trying to get back together. So like, this is a group chat with 12 people in it and I'm texting and I'm like, Hey, where are you guys? Right. Cause they're like, we're lost. Okay. So they literally said, we're lost. That's like the last message sent. I'm like, okay, text me back. I'm like, where are you? What do you see? What's the landmark? Silence. I'm like, where the hell did everybody just go? Where did you just, where the hell did everybody just go? Where are you? And then I text again. I'm like, WTF, where are you? Like five minutes later, they text back, we're by the yellow flowers. I went right up to them. I said, is this how you close people? Is this why my sales are so much higher than everyone else's? You go. Jesse takes opportunity after opportunity to talk about herself in the most self-absorbed way. Why would you ever talk badly about your leaders? She literally says, well, I got some insight about leaders and just degraded them to talk about sales training. That's so disrespectful. Claiming you care about them, but yet you're gonna be like, oh, is this why I'm better than you? This is why you should not be trusting people like this. This is a genuinely disrespectful human being. And like, this is why Jesse is also problematic because like, why is everything in life connected to the business concept or business world? Not every aspect of my life is connected to YouTube. No. I don't sit here and think, if this is how you don't finish a workout, is this like how you don't finish a YouTube video? No, because we're in the real world, babe. We have real world things that don't always have to connect to business. So if you always have to connect this stuff to business, you don't have a life outside of this. That's weird. Oh, that long we're talking to a prospect and then you don't respond and then you come back like 20 minutes later. Also, people have a life. Also, people have jobs. Also, people have other things going on, emergencies. ADHD, like things like that. And I'm just listing very random examples of things that could happen. But like, can we stop being disrespectful and weird and judgmental on people? What? Don't trust people who are going to have to be super disrespectful to you over this. This is not normal. No, my.
my God. I'm like, you guys are supposed to be my top sellers. Where the hell are you? Where the hell are you? Dude, if I'm in a sales conversation with you, I'm in a sales conversation with you. If I'm in a recruiting conversation with you, I'm in a recruiting conversation with you. If I'm trying to close a deal and I'm trying to take you on a, or I'm trying to have you take me on a date, I'm in the middle of the conversation. I'm not putting the phone down until it's closed until I got like a plan in my Google calendar of where and when you are taking me on a date. I'm not done. I'm closing the deal. Like the deal is signed, sealed, delivered. Like I don't, I, and I'm like, pick up your damn phones. Okay. So this is another thing I want to talk about. And I am all for cursing, being real, be realistic. Okay. You guys know I, I curse all the fucking time on this channel. I don't care. That is how I am. But also I think we need to understand that there is a time and place for some of those things where if you want to do like a sales training or if you're going to be, yeah, like going to an event or doing something like that. Like you can be real too, but like if you're trying to pitch to someone something is something I've noticed with Jesse is there's never a time and a place for professionalism with her. Like there's always a jab. There's always some random stuff that has no correlation to what she's talking about. And it's very odd behaviors like what we're witnessing in this video. And again, I am all for dressing how you want, talking in the way that you like how you normally do. But also I think there should be a level of professionalism and put togetherness in order to display a business or something that you're approaching as well, or talking to people that you may not know because because you are on the level. You know what I mean? And she lacks knowing the line, but she crosses it consistently. So this is for all of you who do that. Okay, I was hollering at my top sellers in Nashville, like, what are you doing? Is this how you talk to prospects? Oh, hey, Daniel G, what's up, okay? But you have to follow up like that. You've got to follow up. You've got to be faster. You've got to be faster, and you've got to be faster in your follow-up, right? Next, use rejection as an opportunity to learn. Write it down. Use rejection as an opportunity to learn. Again, this isn't everything, okay? This is an opportunity in dating. This is an opportunity in sales. This is an opportunity in recruiting. This is an opportunity in everything. A rejection is not, you're the worst person ever. There's no opportunity for you ever to go on a date or ever be ever close a sale. No, no, no. Pay attention. Pay attention to what's happening in the conversation. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Pay attention. If you are rejected, I want you to actually ask, hey, I totally respect that this is not an opportunity for you. What, what's missing? Like, what could I have said better? Some of you are so scared. You get a no and you don't think, hey, this is a great opportunity to ask, what didn't you like about this? This is a great opportunity. I actually gave an assignment to a bunch of people today. I'll give you guys an assignment. Here you go. This is a separate assignment, business assignment. Thank you for following. I appreciate you. Reach for the sprinkles. I said, I want you guys to go ask your friends that are not in business with you. Why? Or, or excuse me, what, not why, what it is about your content that is making it so that people do not shop from you. Write it down. Okay, so I actually like this a lot, funny enough. Um, having friends that are going to be self-aware with you and be real with you is super duper important. And I think it's great to ask questions about this also. This I like. Actually asking for constructive criticism. See, this this is healthy. That's healthy to ask constructive criticism and learning and developing as well. Now, a lot of you are assuming why your social media content does not close people. Am I right? Put yes in the comments if I'm right. You're assuming you know why people are not converting. You're assuming you know why they say no. What if instead of assuming, you said, hey, Christine, could you look at my social media content and tell me what I'm missing? Hey, Fizz Mama, can you- Okay, but also at the same time, I think we need to acknowledge again that no is a completely full sentence. And if someone just says no, I think that you need to leave it at that. You don't need to be asking someone to continuously go through your stuff. Like, yeah, I'm all for asking other friends and people that like you can have a personal conversation with, but strangers are people that you're trying to talk to. No means no. And accept their no, accept their denial of what you're offering, and then move on. I don't think it's smart though to pester people still and ask them to give a reason. Like that's, to me, this is still begging for a reason and that's very uncomfortable with me leave it at that please tell me what the heck is going on why are why am i not converting people hey donna what is going on why are people not purchasing for me why am i not recruiting what is going on because your friends if they're your real friends and you trust their opinion will tell you girl you know you get up on those live videos a lot you be talking about how you make a lot of money and uh you look like you rolled out of bed Girl, listen, I love you, but let me tell you something right now. You have no sales. 
because you've been talking about how you use this X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you literally are clearly not utilizing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, N, O, P, sister. Jesse, are you going to acknowledge the fact that there are going to be some friends that will come to these people in MLMs and simply say, hey, you're part of an MLM. That's why. You're part of an MLM and that's why you're not doing well because that is how they don't work. Or, hey, that product is genuinely not that good. Or, no, this business opportunity isn't good. Then what? Then what's the counter argument, Jesse? Because the, you're only providing counter arguments for people who are going to be supportive of MLMs. You're not considering the fact that people are going to sit here and realize that they're a problem and try and share. But yet again, she's also the same person that sits here and says, don't listen to people that are against your MLM. Like she goes back and forth with her argument for critical thinking. She like revokes it and says, don't critically think pretty much. And then she goes back and says, do critically think. <laughs> like Sister, Z-Y-X-W-U-V-U, T-S-R-Q-P-O-N, M-L-K-J-I-H-T, F-E-D-C-B-N-A. I just want to see the city off that backwards. Okay? Like, God, I've never done that on a live video before. <laughs> okay? Ask them. They'll be like, girl, boy, whoa, hey, ha. Okay? Very helpful. I know if you haven't shared this video yet, I'm not really sure what you're doing, but that's okay. Use your rejection as an opportunity to learn. I used to ask you, well, what is going on? Why is this not working? They'd be like, girl, like you literally like, come on now. You look sleepy. I look sleepy? Damn, I need some eyelashes. Okay. So use rejection as an opportunity. And please, this is important to understand. Do not take it personally. Do not take their feedback personally. Okay. It has very little to do with you. And a lot to do with being able to control the uncontrollables. Very important in sales. Control the uncontrollables. And then you can choose to turn those weaknesses into strengths or you can choose to ignore them. It's up to you, okay? You can drop a flame in the comments below if that is useful, okay? All right, next, manage your time effectively. Some of you are ramblers. If you want to sell more, stop rambling. Use scripts, use scripts, use scripts, use scripts. Okay, there's some coaches out there who are like, wow, I don't like scripts. You know, if you know scripts, it's just like, wah, wah, wah. okay, coach, bro, sister, brother, friend, cousin, uncle. Listen, I like scripts. I like scripts because scripts are predictable. Scripts, I know how many I can send out in a certain amount of time. Scripts, I know exactly what I need to juggle. I can do multiple things at a certain time. I can, I can, I, you can call it task switching. I'm just going to call it multitasking. I can watch and hit a button on a script. Okay, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Then I'm not caught up in conversation. A lot of you are so caught up in the conversation, you're not closing anybody. Okay, and a lot of you also, you're like giving them solutions to something that they haven't even purchased yet. Like some of you are so far down the line. It's like, they'll say, hey, give me the whole meal plan. Hey, give me the whole uh, workout plan. Hey, give me the whole whatever. They haven't even bought your product yet. Like stop giving them all the extra sauce when they haven't even bought the flipping meat, okay? Like they don't need the au jus when they don't even have the beef, okay? Stop getting caught up in the conversations. Your time is a very hot commodity when it comes to sales because you need to talk to more prospects, which we'll talk about in just a second here. Big fan of scripts. I use the boards app more than anything, okay? You can Google it. Don't ask any questions. Just type boards in the comments below. Stop with the long scripts. What the hell is this? Short scripts. I want to be able to like go like this on my phone. Ah, got it. Okay. Ah, got it. Okay. I don't want to read your 17 paragraph soliloquy about how much you love your product or service or opportunity. I literally don't care. Okay. Like I want to know everything I need to know. This is so valuable. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate that so much. All right. Next. You, oh, well, I just kind of gave this to you. I was gonna say leverage the right technology. Okay. Utilize things like Facebook lives, like Instagram lives, like TikTok lives, like YouTube lives, utilize things like reels, utilize things like the boards app, like I just talked to you about. If you don't want to use that, you can utilize, uh, just like your shortcut keyboard in your telephone. Okay. Um, if you need scripts, there's a link in my bio, you can go to the link in my bio. There's like Jesse Lee's free scripts. You can go to that because people are asking what scripts do I use? Just go to the, go to my bio. Okay. You can literally utilize technology. If you utilize the right technology, you can expand much faster. Um, I'm a big fan of things like many chat as well. You can use different flow systems, things like that. I know I'm speaking fast, but I'm trying to give you guys a really power pack training to help you guys out. Okay. Next, you need to make sure you never stop prospecting. Write that down. Never stop prospecting. Never stop prospecting. Never stop prospecting. Your scripts have been so awesome and thankful. I'm thankful for that, Jessica. That's awesome. Guys, I'm, I'm a... I don't know how to say it. And it's a Jesse Lee training. Sorry if you're new around here. If you're new, put new. I'm just going to say it. I'm like a hoe when it comes to prospecting. <laughs> okay, like not literally, but I am a funny girl. So I just had to say it. Look, like I'm going to shoot my shot and 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 shoot my shot. I'm going to shoot my shot and 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 shoot my shot. 
<sighs> and shoot my shot and shoot my shot and shoot my shot. And I'm going to keep on shooting my shot. Okay, we get it, Miss Jessie. Oh, that was enough. Okay, no, seriously, though, that's the problem is why do you always have to keep shooting your shot to get people to join your team? Like, and this is my thing, too, that shows how unstable and shitty MLMs are is the fact that you continuously cycle through that many people that you have to continuously recruit that many people. Because I know people that are in Jesse's downline, not all of them stay. And there's many people like that who do not stay because they lose a lot of money. You can only lose so much. There's many other horrible things that happen in MLMs. And it shows how unstable it is when you have to filter through that many people and continuously recruit. That's exhausting. In addition, I will also say this as well for a company in general for nine to fives and then for multi-level marketing companies. If you see a company where people always leave because they're like, oh my God, this is a horrible workspace then something is up with that company. We could acknowledge that while also acknowledging the fact too that if people all the time leave your MLM and your downline because it's that bad, there is something wrong with the MLM. Repeatedly, like you're not going to offend me with a no because I'm going to go find more prospects. My scripts are in the link. Essentially showing that you are simply just another random number to her. Never stop prospecting. I never stop prospecting. I also don't fall in love with somebody's potential. Write that down. Thank you for following, even though I just said I'm a hoe. Okay, but I meant like a prospecting hoe. Okay? <clears throat> like I never, ever, ever, ever stop prospecting. In sales, there is no such thing as too many prospects. In sales, there is no such thing as resting on your laurels. In sales, you, you understand there is no limit in sales. Like you can make as much money or as little money as you want in sales, but you cannot keep talking to the same five prospects or 10 prospects or 100 prospects. I talk to thousands of prospects, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of prospects. OK, because I know if I'm going to scale my business, then I need to talk to thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Complacency is never. That's also super duper 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 fucking exhausting. Think about this, too, because it clearly shows how bad the marketing is and how bad she is at marketing, because you shouldn't have to message thousands of people in order for them to like. Like, for example, here's a beautiful example. I'm not that messaging thousands of people to subscribe to me. No. Clearly something I'm doing is working and people like me or whatever I have to provide, which is wonderful. But that's what you want. You shouldn't have to sit there and messaging thousands of people to have somebody interested in what you have to provide. You should be able to craft that capability to where people sit there and be like, yeah, okay, I like this. I'm going to go after it. Whether it's subscribing to a channel, whether it's buying a product or joining something that you have to offer. If you have to continuously break things down and message people so frequently to prospect, then your marketing is bad. Down. Complacency is never rewarded in this line of business. I see people all the time in sales run for some kind of promotion. And as soon as they hit some kind of promotion, poof, they vanish. Are you kidding me? If you want to continue to enjoy success as a salesperson, always be prospecting. I know people are like, always be closing, ABC, whatever. I think ABP, okay? Always be prospecting. And it can be customer referrals. It can be looky. It could be attraction marketing. It could be whatever. I post so much content, so much, my, whether it's my podcast, whether it's YouTube, whether it's TikTok or Facebook or Instagram, I'm everywhere. I'm all over the place because I'm constantly trying to identify. I'm not giving you another snack. This is sales, actually. She's giving us a sales lesson. The more you ask for it, you probably will get it. <laughs> so she's just... You just, you're learning too much from your mother. That's what this is. Okay. So look, <clears throat> I'm constantly saying follow. I'm constantly asking for shares because my pipeline will never run dry. My pipeline will never be empty. Okay. I spend so much time every single day reaching out to leads, closing leads, using my scripts. I'm always fresh. I'm always talking to more people. And it also helps then when you're feeling like, ugh. You, I don't ever feel like, ugh, because I don't have to feel like, ugh. I have so many people to talk to. If one person says no, then I just talk to more. Hi, you still have me? Again, like you suck at marketing because I literally I uh, so many different brands in this room right now that I purchase from, they don't harass me or message me consistently trying to get me to buy something. No one is personally trying to message you and do all of that. You should have very good marketing and content that you talk about your products or whatever you have to offer that is so enticing and people can do well. That's why so many huge businesses have exploded because of convenience and because of the marketing that showed how amazing whatever they have to offer was. So again, you are severely lacking in the marketing category. We're not even covering marketing at all to begin with in this and marketing has everything to do with sales. Now you won't get so offended, all right? Promise. Next, 
perfect the way you respond to objections. Okay, you're going to get rejections and it's a great way to learn. So instead of being so freaked out anytime there are rejections, just understand, again, it goes back to product knowledge. You know the ins and outs of your product. Think many steps ahead of your customers. What are the rejections you constantly get? Reverse engineer the thing, the 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 uh, excuses, if you will, the objections you continue to get so you can anticipate the moves of the person. So you can say, oh, ha, 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 to be expected. I had a feeling this person was going to say this. I had a feeling they were going to say something about whatever, okay? Then you stop getting so worried because you're like, <clears throat> yeah, I had a feeling you might say something like that, okay? And when you have the feeling that they might say something like that, it puts you in a position of power. And you always want to be in a position of power. You don't want your prospect to bring up the objection. You want to be the one who gets to say, ha, let me get this roadblock out of the way right? Then you own the objection instead of letting them own the objection, okay? All right, next sales tip. If this is useful, make sure you share it. You can put yes in the comments if you're getting anything out of this, okay? Use empathy to connect. This is so real, okay? Empathy is real, especially in sales in 2022 when so many people are like out there doing God knows what, trying to close prospects, close sales, whatever, okay? I'm constantly on the no like, and trust bandwagon, do they know you? Do they like you? Do they trust you? Do they know you? Do they like you? Do they trust you? Do they know you? Do they like you? Do they trust you? If the customer doesn't trust you, chances are they're not going to buy your product. It's like when you go into any kind of store, any any kind of anything, and someone gives you kind of an attitude, you're probably not going to purchase from them. They try to upsell you on something. You're like, I don't really think so. Okay? Start to get to know them. Right? No one wants to feel like they're being manipulated into buying something. Right? No one wants to feel like they're only being spoken to for a sale. Like, actually get to know these people. And the top salespeople, they know a lot about their people. Top salespeople know a lot about their people. They know a lot about, you know, unique issues they're facing, a lot about, you know, how many kids somebody might have, or, you know, are they single? Are they married? Are they whatever? Like even their name, if somebody tries to sell me something, they're like, I just really like you, Jesse. I'm like, let's just, let's just stop right there. You don't know nothing about me. You don't even know my name. Let's just let's stop right there. I'm just saying. Okay. So. Think about that. Next, focus on quality instead of quantity. I like quality leads. I like working with people who want to work. I like selling to people who have positive attitudes. I am not in the business of convincing people to close a sale. You understand me? You might want to write that down. I'm not in the business of convincing people. Okay. So many of you are a little confused about this. You're like, maybe if I just try 74 different closes, then they'll eventually buy. They might eventually buy, but they'll probably be really annoyed with you. And they're not going to be excited about their purchase. I don't want anybody to ever be unexcited about being either a business builder with me or a, or, uh, or using the product that I sell. Okay. For me, it's like, I think Customer experience is really important because you can scale tremendously. You can let people very easily talk about your product or your service or your opportunity. Oh my gosh, what it's like to be on that team. Oh my gosh, what it's like to be part of that culture. Oh my gosh, what it's like to use that product. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with this. Customers will start talking. Customers will sell for you. So if you are really spending time getting to know these people, you're going to have better quality instead of quantity. I would rather have a bunch of six and seven figure earners than like dragging people to get to trainings or dragging people to take their product, right? I don't want to burn out, right? I don't want to be exhausted in my business. I want to be excited about my business. I stay excited about my business because of the people that I do the business. Hey, okay, absolutely. I completely think that it's logically smart for her to want quality. However, it's very confusing to me when she says that she will really literally message anyone and it's fine. How do you determine if they're quality enough then for your team? And then also, are they not quality because they don't make money and don't do well, even though they're running and working their ass off in their business? Like, ugh, we're lacking logic. Wait. So I'm really focused on, hey, who are the customers that are I'm excited to work with? Who are the customers that will be compliant? Who are the customers who are consistent? Who are the customers who are stable? Who are the customers who, you know, maybe it wasn't the fast close, but I got to know them really well. And now they're ready to order right? It's another reason why I don't do pushy sales. I don't know if you've noticed this. I'm very much so like, hey, just go to the link in the bio. I'll do all this live training, all of this content, all this value. I'll give and give and give. I'll see you on live video multiple times a day. I'll start to get to know you. I'll click like on your stuff. I'll comment back on your posts. And then, hey, y'all know the links in the bio. Okay. And then I'll follow up. Like I told you, I'll follow up with you after the sales close to find out what you're trying to do, what your goals are, etc. Like that's the kind of flow I like to have in my business. It, it, it is just the way that I like to funnel people in sales to me was always a marathon of sprints, write that down marathon of sprints. It was not, it was not 
a sprint. Okay. It was a sprint to a goal, a sprint to a goal, a sprint to a goal, a sprint to a goal with a full understanding of I was not going to become Jesse Lee like I am today. I was not going to become the Jesse Lee of today by being in business for four months or six months or even six years. This is year 11. I'm a sales assassin now because I've built a brand on social media now for 11 years. Okay. Really heavy on social media for like seven, seven and a half. Okay. So I've been nurturing. I've been giving a lot of you, like put how long you've been following me in the comments. I'm just curious. Facebook will probably have some people that have been following for like 15 years. It'll be something crazy. Okay. I've been, I've not been running all over town chasing people. Okay. I've been forging bonds, bonds with people. Some of you for over, a like, how are you making a bond when you're consistently always quote unquote prospecting and like cold messaging people? That makes no logical sense also. Like you've been forging bonds, yet you literally are losing a bunch of people simply because your MLM and your shitty company just does not work for them. Her sales stuff is not actually like hitting. Like, again, like I'm listening to some of this and some of this, like what she says makes sense, but like there's nothing revolutionary about this there's nothing like oh yeah that's a good idea you know because like if anything for sales i would really think about like focusing on certain yeah aspects of marketing i just really like we're, i think we're missing out on a lot of stuff here so i think this is a wonderful taste of you know if you want to have a membership with her or whatever the case may be it doesn't really sound like you're gonna gain a lot so that was it for today's video thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys in the next one stay glowing my beautiful queens love you bye